Well, hello there, my darling sea creatures, my merfolk. Are we still doing that? I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. But hey, hi, it's me, Sara, aka the Dapper Fish. Nice to meet you, if we haven't met already. And I am a makeup artist from Lisbon, Portugal. And I used to do makeup on YouTube, and now I do makeup mostly on Instagram, but now I want to come back to YouTube. It's been about two years since I filmed my last video on YouTube, maybe a slightly bit longer than two years, so I'm very rusty. This is going to be very bad, so just know that. But I really miss the whole personable side of YouTube and also the teachy side of YouTube and I really miss building parasocial relationships with you guys and sharing whatever knowledge I have with a total of five people. Okay, this is ten, this is not five. The total of five people who watched me, maybe ten, maybe more, I don't know. There weren't many of you, but the ones that were there were really good and I loved you a lot. This one's for you. And what better time to come back to YouTube than during a particularly stressful time during a global pandemic, huh? My my, how things have changed since we last saw each other here on YouTube, right? Anyway, I hope you're okay. Let's go through makeup therapy together. And since I haven't been here in a while, I'm gonna keep this very chill, very casual. I'm just gonna do my makeup and talk you through it. I'm going to try and use some of my current favorite products because it's been a while, although I really don't think, even though it's been two years, that it's changed all that much. Because I like what I like. I feel like I just need to get used to talking to a camera by myself with a cat on the table. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so for priming, I'm not a big, like, specific bottled primer, advertised as a primer kind of person. I'm a big believer in skin prep, and I will use whatever I feel is going to work as skin prep for the specific situation that I'm working with. Usually when I'm doing my makeup in the morning, I will have a freshly applied skincare routine, so I usually don't feel like I have to add anything else. I actually tend to cater my skincare routine according to the kind of makeup that I want to do sometimes. That's a whole tutorial on its own, so I'm just gonna move past that. So it's nighttime now, and I have done my skincare a few hours ago. I'm just going to take a little bit of toilet paper because I'm very, very fancy, and I'm going to blot any excess uh, moisture from my skin. I don't want to wash my skin because I don't want to lose uh, all of that skincare that I applied earlier, but I also don't want any natural oils that I might have right now to interfere with the application of makeup. But I think that before foundation, whether it's a dedicated primer or a moisturizer, you do need to apply something. And since it's been a while since I've done my skincare, I'm going to prep my skin using a primer, actually. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Primer. I really like this one. It's kind of like a light uh, moisturizer that gives a really, really nice glow to the skin. Colourpop does send me PR and they sent me this, but I really like it and I would buy it myself if I had the chance, really. And it does set down to a slightly tacky finish, which will help grip onto that foundation. Lately, I actually spend most of my time with my eyebrows shaved off. It's just fun. I can do whatever I want with them. The area surrounding this particular room of my house is so noisy. How do people find so many things to do during a lockdown? So I'm actually going to start by color correcting around the eye. The product that I like to use for that is this Clara Instant Concealer in the shade number two. This is the worst. I love this concealer. I think the formula is great, but I wish I loved something else more than I love this. They have three shades, four shades. I think I, it's safe to say that largely available, they only have three shades, and two of them are suitable for me. I have no excuse to be using this, it always makes me feel dirty to talk about it, but I love the formula, and actually the very few shades that they have I think are just awesome, because they're the perfect amount of peach to color correct without looking orange. 
So they're not designed as color correctors, so the colors aren't so intense, but they're peachy enough to serve as a color corrector. Shade 2 for me is perfect as a color corrector. Shade 1 would be a normal brightening concealer shade for me. So I usually just do that. That's not very hygienic. I'm just, this is mine and I don't care. And I'm going to use this ColourPop F12 brush just to blend this out. I try to do this step very intentionally, so I only go to the places where my under eye is the darkest. Sometimes I make sure to go on the outer corner as well, just to bring out that redness, even though this shade isn't necessarily the perfect one for redness, it does help it out a little bit because it's a concealer. And I like using my fingers to go over top, just to make sure everything is one with the skin. So my favorite product that I fell in love with in 2020 is the Face Atelier Ultra Foundation. I have heard so many things about this foundation for years, but this was very, very heavily recommended to me by a fellow makeup artist uh, in Portugal, Teresa from Kitchen Makeup. If you're from Lisbon, you should check Kitchen out. And I think it completely took away any will that I had to try any new foundations for the rest of my life. I have this for myself and I have it in my kit. It's wonderful. It works on every skin type. It looks beautiful on the skin. It's very long lasting. I just, I just really like it. I just put it on a palette and I'm making sure that I have a very thin amount on my finger. And I'm using my finger kind of like a paddle brush. Sometimes I do this with a paddle brush. Other times I do it with my finger. Uh, other times I don't do this at all. I just go directly in with a buffing brush. And I tend to only apply foundation in the areas where I feel like I need it the most. Need. And that is usually on my cheeks, under eyes, around my nose, around my mouth. I also have quite a bit of redness in this area here and some discoloration. So I tend to focus a little bit of foundation in those areas as well. And I'm usually quite red in between my brows as well and on my brow bone and temples. I always try not to apply a lot of foundation on my forehead and on my nose because I feel like it breaks down a lot faster if I do. So I try to keep it a very, very thin layer. Also, I don't really need a lot of foundation in those areas. I just need to even out the skin tone a little bit and I feel like whatever is left on my brush after I do this will be enough. So I'm just taking a Real Techniques setting brush and I'm I'm buffing this all in. I honestly haven't even used a whole pump of foundation and I feel like this is this I'm I'm covering basically most of my face. This foundation stretches out really really well. You can really really blend it. Sorry. <laughs> my cat my cat just pooped. And she won't stop digging. Yes, queen, cover that poop. Yes. <laughs> Please leave. Their toilet is not technically in the room, but it's not too far away and there isn't a door in between. So that's what I have to deal with. This is a very professional video. <laughs> I'm sorry. With whatever foundation is left on my palette, I'm going to build it up just where I have that discoloration. And before I try to blend it in, I'm going to leave it there just to dry out a little bit. Once it starts drying out, I can actually blend around it without losing much of the coverage. So that's what I'll be doing. So I'm ready to blend this out a little bit. And you can see it's not completely covered up, but it's covered up enough that I don't really care. So if you have followed me here or on Instagram, you probably already know that I'm a huge fan of the Kiko eyeshadow sticks, so I feel like I have to use one right now. And I've also been on a quest throughout the internet to find a brand that does a product like this with the colors that I need. And I found the Pinky Rose Base Sticks. This is an American brand and the shipping to Portugal I won't, I won't even tell you. It is ridiculous. I actually managed to get them with the help of a friend, so I do have my favorite shades, and I'm going to use one of those and one of the Kiko eyeshadow sticks. So I have the purple base stick and I have a lilac eyeshadow stick from Kiko. So I like using these kinds of sticks to just map out my shapes or draw shapes. 
you know, stuff like that. I still don't know what shape I'm gonna make. I'm just, I'm just doing things. I haven't done makeup in quite a while, actually. Which sucks, because I love doing makeup. Okay, so that's going to be the general shape, and I'm going to use the darker pinky rose purple just to add a little bit of dimension. So the Kiko ones will completely set down. However, if your eyelids are very, very oily, they will eventually break down. So they will usually last longer if you do apply an eyeshadow on top of them. The Pinky Rose ones don't completely set down. They're designed to be more like bases. They work almost like a regular long-lasting uh, pencil, eye pencil. I'm gonna, gonna do this because I think, I think it's gonna, it's gonna do something. I don't know. So now I'm just going to, I'm just going to blend all of this. I'm going to see what shape I get because I haven't, I haven't decided anything. I'm just, just playing around with textures and color. This is definitely going to stain my brush. The pinky rose sticks, the ones that have any kind of red pigment in them, they're gonna, they're gonna stain your lids. They stain your lids like crazy. Oh wow, this is incredible. I have never done a makeup as amazing as this. I don't, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh my god. I should never stop doing makeup because when I stop doing makeup, it's, it's a disaster. Okay, so I've done something here. Something happened. And this is gonna look really stupid for a while, but I'm, I trust, I trust that I can make this work. So you're, you're gonna have to trust with me. So some of my favorite shadows from the past year was this little palette that I made uh, from Lethal Cosmetics. It has some really nice lilacs here that I love, so I will use those. I'm going to take the matte one here. So I'm just using that uh, muted purple shade to just deepen out the shapes on my eye. And now I'm going to take the shimmery lilac here on the same brush and I'm gonna put it here. Why am I putting it here you ask? I don't know because I like the reflection there and I'm gonna put it here as well. I'm actually going to take it on my finger. Sometimes I do like to leave the actual lid of the eye almost free of product, like either with a very, very thin layer of eyeshadow or just no eyeshadow at all, so that my natural oils, when they start coming through, they're going to break down the very thin layer of eyeshadow in this area here, and it's just going to look more lived in and grungy without looking too messy. It's gonna look intentional. That's not to say that this is not a complete accident. Everything that's going on here is a complete accident. I have no idea what I'm doing. None of this is intentional. All of it is just... Now I'm going to take this one here. This is just a white that shifts pinky. That isn't going on a finger. That is actually going on my blending brush. And I'm just going to apply a very small amount just on the brow bone for reflection. And I'm going to take the worst purple eyeshadow that I own because I like the color, which is this purple here from the Pat McGrath Blitz Astral Quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. So yes, very expensive makeup, terrible quality. Just have one eyeshadow though, the other ones are, are great. I'm going to take it on a synthetic brush. This is a Cosette uh, kind of pencil brush, just because I think these synthetic brushes work well with eyeshadows that are very stiff and feel kind of like a cream. Actually, I'm using my finger now because the brush isn't doing what, what I wanted it to do because this eyeshadow sucks, basically. And I'm just using this eyeshadow for extra depth just on the, the lash line and blending it up towards the the crease of the eye on the outer corner, same thing underneath. And I'm also going to use it, again, I need my finger to deepen out this thing here. It, it, you see, it's such a beautiful eyeshadow. Why isn't it looking beautiful? 
right now. Th this is a Colourpop BFF cream gel liner pencil in the shade Piggy Bank. And I'm using this on my waterline. This is a much warmer pencil than the rest of the makeup that I used. Did I mean for it to be a warmer pencil? No, not exactly. Uh, I just grabbed this one, but I like the way it looks in contrast. I, I'm also going to take it on the upper waterline. I, I hate doing this so much. Now I'm going to do my eyebrows, and for my eyebrows I always use the same two products. I'm going to use a Deep Brow Pomade. This one is from Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Granite. And a Zoeva 317 Wing Liner Brush. Okay, so my battery died and I had to take a break, but now I'm back. It's 1.30 in the morning and we're gonna do eyebrows, yay! Before I do my brows, I always make sure that the eyebrow area is dry. So I will blot out any excess oil and I also powder it sometimes. Not only that will help the eyebrows last longer, but it will make it much easier to get a controlled application. I'm just gonna speed through it, but basically I draw little hair strokes. So the reason I'm only doing my brows now, if I was to paint on top of my eyebrows after I had them done, it would just remove all of the hair that I have applied, basically. See, even the brows are coming out wrong. This is coming out way too 80s. That's not... It's not what I intended. Why do my eyebrows look like shit? Okay, if my eyebrows want to be dark, I'm going to make them as bushy as, as they need to be. I hate everything about these eyebrows. I hate this eye look. I, I hate this. <laughs> I'm going to take this Colourpop Super Shock eyeshadow in the shade Ringlet. I think this might have been a limited edition. It was from a butterfly themed collection. I don't know but it's pretty. So I'm just popping this on my inner corner and hoping for the best, really. Adding a little bit of this here, but trying to be very careful. Okay, since this look is already looking so... <laughs> why not take a risk? I'm gonna do the rest of my face in yellow and orange. So this is a MAC cream color base in the shade Yellow Scream. They don't make this anymore. This is, I don't know how old, I've had it forever, but it's still good. Doesn't smell bad, performs amazing. This is a multi-purpose balmy cream that you can use however you want. I like to use this one as blush. This is my favorite yellow blush. So I'm going to take it on this synthetic fluffy brush and pop this on my cheeks. And a little on my nose. Because why not? And I'm gonna put some of that orange lipstick on top of this as blush, but first I wanna go in with some highlighter. And I'm going to use the Super Shock Slurpe. The Super Shock. So <laughs> I'm going to use the Super Shock Cheek Highlighter from ColourPop in the shade Flexitarian. It's the most incredible beamy highlighter in the whole wide world. I think it looks especially beautiful, this formula, if you apply it on top of a balmy kind of product that already has some kind of balmy glow. I apply it quite heavily like this and then I go back in with my foundation brush in the center of the face and my blush brush on the cheeks so that everything melts together. And yes, my nose is yellow. I know that looks weird, but it was a choice that I made. Okay, so now I'm just applying a lot of bit of this Fenty Beauty lipstick in the shade Pumpkin Rose. I'm obsessed with the Fenty Beauty cream blush that's this color, but I have been convincing myself that I don't need it because I have this lipstick and I use it as blush all the time. It works perfectly. I like it a lot. So I just applied it on the very tops of my cheeks 
Now I'm going to take some of it <laughs> right on the bridge of my nose because I can. And on my lips. And I'm going to put some of that cream color base on top. My lips are way too dry for this lipstick. I don't think this is working. I'm going to take this pencil by Linda Hallberg in Likeable Mood. It's her Mood Crayon in Likeable, actually. My lips continue to be way too dry for this lipstick. I should have applied lip balm before, but nah, decisions. I'm gonna apply some mascara now. I am using the Kiko Maxi Mod Mascara. I really like it because it's very dramatic. Oh, baby. I tend to skip mascara a lot uh, these days because I uh, lashes are passe. I I'm kidding, I love lashes, but I think there's a time and a place for eyelashes. It doesn't need to be in every single look. Things just look better and finished a lot of the times. Why is everyone so agitated today? Is there something with the moon today? I don't know how that works. And I am going to powder a little bit because I'm feeling a little greasy. I'm feeling all sorts of unpleasant things right now. I'm going to take a little bit of my RCMA uh, translucent powder. I feel like I need something that's actually going to s just set the foundation down and not really add anything else. Which is why this powder is so good, because you just need like the tiniest amount and it's really gonna, gonna lock down the foundation. Why are my cats crazy right now? Why is everything happening? I don't understand. I'm going to stop now. I don't want to continue to torture myself like this. Hope some of you guys like it though, at least a little bit, or that I was able to teach you something, even though half the time I had no idea what I was doing. I promise you a better video next time, or at least a better makeup look. I promise you that much. I trust myself to deliver a better makeup look next time. And yeah, that is everything for today. If you've somewhat enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and sharing with your friends on social media. You know, just letting them know what a failure I am. Comment down below, because comments really make my world go round. They make me super happy and they're super important to keep us creators on the internet motivated to create more stuff for you. And if you'd like to see more stuff better than this, hopefully, I will be happy to oblige. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, why not? Let's be YouTube friends. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I am Dapperfish on Instagram as well, so go follow me there, please. Much better makeup on Instagram, that I promise you. Anyway, thank you so, so much for your time. It was a pleasure having you here with me. I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye!